This is part two of logistic regression tutorial. If you haven't watched the first part, then you should watch that first. In the previous tutorial, we discussed about binary classification where the output classes are binary in nature. They are either yes or no. In this one, we are going to discuss multi-class classification. For example, when you're trying to predict which party a person is going to vote for, the possible outcomes are one of these three. The concrete problem that we're going to solve today is to recognize the handwritten digit. For example, here, this one maps to one of the output categories, which is nothing but digit, digits zero to nine. Similarly here for maps to this particular output category. So we will uh, use a training set with a lot of hand digit uh, characters, and then we'll build a model using logistic regression. And at the end of the tutorial, you will have an interesting exercise to work on. So let's uh, jump straight into writing the code. As usual, I'm going to use my Jupyter Notebook as an IDE. And here I have imported matplotlib and also scikit-learn's uh, dataset. So sklearn.dataset has some predefined ready-made datasets that you can use uh, to learn machine learning. From this, I'm using load digits uh, dataset. So if you read the documentation, all it is is 1797 handwritten uh, digits uh, of size eight by eight. Okay, so it looks something like this. And what we are going to do is given these digits, we are going to identify that, uh, what, what digit that is, all right? So let me just run it. So this has run fine. I am going to now call load digits method to load my training set basically. And I want to explore what this uh, training set contains. So it contains a couple of things. It has data, which is your real data. So let's print few elements. So as it's written in the documentation, there are 1797 sample. So I'm just going to print the first one. And it's an array, okay? As such, it is an eight by eight uh, image, but the image is represented as a one dimensional array. So if you count these elements, it will be uh, 64, which is eight by eight. And if you want to see this particular element, then you can use uh, matplotlib. So I'm going to do plot plt.gray and plt has a method called mat show. And what you can do is you can print the corresponding image. So data has uh, the numeric data and images will have the actual images. So you can see that our data zero and image zero, they kind of relate to each other. And the only difference between the two is that you have numeric, numeric data here versus you have an actual image. So if you want to print, let's say first five sample, then you can just print it like this. And you will see that, see zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, and corresponding numbers will be in this data array. So that looks pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do is use this uh, to train our model. Now before we do that, let's uh, take a look at target and target names. Okay, so our target, so if I print digits.target zero, let me print zero to five. So you see like zero to five is literally in a sequence. The first element is zero, one, two, three. And that's what this is printing here. It is saying that this image is zero. The last image, this is four. So this is our complete training set, which has our image as well as the target variable, you know, like it says what it is. So we can use our data data and target to train our model. Now, before training our model, the usual thing that we do is we import uh, from model selection, we import 
string test split and we try to divide our data set into a training and test samples so the way you do it is you say x train x test i don't exactly remember the order of the argument so i'm going to what i'm going to do it okay let me do this so train test split uh, digits dot data because that's your data set uh, then you have digits dot target because that's your target variable okay and if you hit shift tab it will show you all the nice documentation of that api so here it says this is the order in which it returns the output all right so now what i just did by executing this command is i had uh, input and out output variable from my training set and I divided them into test and train sets. Now the reason that we do this typically is we don't want to uh, overfit our model. We don't want to make our model such that we just uh, bias it against the training data. That's why the data that the model is trained against should be different than the data that uh, the model is tested against. Okay. So that's why we split these two. So if you look at, okay, I have to supply the size. So I'm going to probably supply taste size, taste size. So I want 20% of my samples to be taste size and 80% to be the training. Okay, so if I look at, length of x train it is this and if i look at length of x this it is this so this is roughly 80 percent of all available samples all right so i have a training and test uh, data set split now i can uh, create my logistic regression model so from this i want to import logistic regression and create a model object so that you can train it later and you all know the way you train it is by calling a fit method and fit method you will call it against x taste x train sorry and y train when you run that the model is getting trained using this x train and y train data set so again to repeat x train has the hand uh, written characters and y train will have the corresponding output it will say okay for this image it is four etc now since my model is ready the first thing i always do is i calculate the score so the score tells you uh, how accurate is your model and the way you do that is you have to supply x taste and y taste so using the x taste it will calculate the y predicted value and it will compare those y predicted value against the real value which is y taste turns out that my model is doing pretty good the accuracy is 96.67 percent almost which is really good so now i'm going to make my actual prediction and you know that you have to call predict method for that now let's see so before i call this method what i want to do is i want to pick up a random sample so i will say plt dot match show digits dot images let's say i'm just picking up a random sample okay hmm this is pretty hard even i don't know what this number is actually let's see so this number is actually digits dot target 67 so you have to access the same index in your target okay so this is six okay so let's see what our model will predict for this guy so i will say model dot predict okay model dot predict what okay what do i want to predict i want to predict 
now see I'm not going to supply images here because image is all is all binary data uh, my model likes numeric data more so I will use the same index 67 but I'm using data instead of images okay this is the error you get when you're not supplying multi-dimensional arrays i'm just going to supply multi-dimensional array just for the sake of it and you can see that it is predicting the target variable all right okay let's just okay let me just or uh, create a new cell here and let me predict okay what do i want to predict okay i want to predict zero to five now you all know 0 to 5 is literally 0 to 5 so 0 is 0 1 is 1 and so on when I execute it see my model is doing pretty good so my score is 0.96 how do I know where it didn't do well okay because all the samples I tried is seems to be doing pretty well so I want to know where exactly it failed and you know I want to get overall feeling of my model's accuracy and one of the ways of doing that is confusion matrix. So I will show you what confusion matrix is really. Uh, for that I have to import from this matrix I need to import confusion matrix okay and then before I do that I need to uh, get the predicted values so I will say predict x taste when I run that I get all the predicted values for this x taste okay and then I create a confusion matrix and in the confusion matrix what you supply is y taste which is the truth and then y predicted which is what your model predicted and then you get confusion matrix back when you run that you get this two by two dimensional array and you are wondering what the heck this is so this is better visualized in matplotlib or seaborn right so i will uh, use that library uh, for the visualization here i'm just going to copy paste the code for confusion matrix visualization here i'm using seaborn library which is similar to matplotlib it's used for visualization and i'm calling a heat map here with the confusion matrix cm variable that we created here and when you run that uh, this is the confusion matrix that you got now the way this works is see here you see 37 number what it means is 37 time the truth was zero and my model predicted it to be zero here this 2 means 2 times my truth was 8 meaning I fed my model the image of 8 but my model said no it is 1. So these are the instances where it's not doing good. So you can see that in, in anywhere in this area in this area when you don't see 0 it means your model is not working right. So here for example again 2 times my images were of digit 4 but my model predicted it to be 1 so that's what this is so confusion matrix is just a nice way of visualizing uh, how well your model is doing all right now it's the time for exercise today's exercise is going to be uh, using uh, sklearn datasets iris flower dataset which has following four features so if you don't know about iris iris is a type of flower and the flower has a diff two type of uh, leaves you know one leaf is called um, one leaf is called sepal the other one is called petal and they have like a height and width and based on these height and widths you can you can predict what kind of iris flower it is okay so our data set will have three kind of flowers these are the names of three different iris flowers and the features that we have are these four which is basically petal width and height and sepal width and height and you will use uh, 
this data set, the iris data set, and you will load all those 150 samples, then divide them into test and training samples, and then uh, build a logistic regression model uh, and tell me the accuracy that you can come up with. And then you can just do a few predictions uh, using that model. All right, that's all I had for this tutorial. Uh, I have the link of this Jupyter Notebook down below and you can find the exercise also. So make sure to refer to those uh, useful links and please, please do some practice uh, yourself. Just by watching this video, you are not going to become expert, all right? Thanks for watching.